Welcome to Unminding, where we dive deep into the realms of self-realization and the amazing power of thought. In this week's episode, Change Your Mind, Change Your Life. We invite you on a journey, one that takes us beyond the ordinary and into the extraordinary. We will explore the profound connection between our mindset and the life we create for ourselves. We will explore the power of thought, beliefs, and perspectives, discovering how they create our reality and why changing your mind may not be as difficult as you think. When we see thought in a new way, a new world is born with nothing changing but you. Enjoy the show. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me all by myself. Because obviously, Gem, she's not around. She's not feeling very well. So I just thought that song was quite funny to use to start the spaces off today. Does anyone want to come and help me? If you do, please put your hand up. That would be wonderful. And I will add you. And yeah, we'll just see what happens. Are you there, Dreadus? Hello. Hey. <laughs> Are you going to be my co host? I'll be your co-host oh. with the opportunity. Oh, thank you, darling. I love it. This is my very naughty friend, so please don't be naughty. <laughs> I'm not being naughty. Pinky promise. <laughs> okay. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Oh, that's brilliant. And also, if anybody has any questions, please raise your hand. Please come to speak. Jem usually checks the DMs, but I can do it at the same time as I'm on. Questions are always good because we're going to kind of just... See what happens tonight without Gem. See which direction it goes in. My idea is actually to go back to basics and talk about the three principles. Really kind of dig into what they are, how they're helpful, how they helped me. And really go back to really the essence and the core of what our teaching is here. Because I think that it's always good to be reminded of the simplicity of them. It's always good to come to a space and just know that you can just spend the hour checking out, really, just having a bit of peaceful time, a bit of peace and quiet, a more settled mind. So I think that's the direction that I'm going to go in. I'm a little bit nervous without Gem. It's the first time I've actually properly done one and known she was definitely not going to be on. But I'm sure it'll be fine. If not, it'll get deleted. So <laughs> we'll just see how it goes. So, Dreadus, have you got anything to say? Have you got anything before I start? Well, I've obviously listened to your um, podcast for quite a while. I just want to learn more about the three principles. So I just wanted to know if you could break it down a little bit, just so that an idiot like me will understand it better, basically. Okay, well, at least you're getting it right, because you called them five principles last time you asked me. So <laughs> we're going in the right direction. Guilty. <laughs> okay, right. So before we get going, I just would like to thank our sponsors, Vemp. They're brilliant and you can check them out on Vemp XYZ. Yeah, just relax. I think it's really important to leave everything that you've been stressing about this week, everything that looks like a problem, just leave it at the door. You don't need it. You don't need it right now. We just need to settle back, settle down into something a little bit more peaceful, relax and let all your problems melt away. You know, there's nothing that over the next hour that you need to solve or you need to sort out. You just really need to spend some time, as we all do, resting in the knowing of who we are, resting in something deeper than the everyday, than all the things that we get so caught up in, the thoughts that we get so caught up in, the situations that we get so caught up in. We don't need them. We're always trying to work things out through the intellect and Often it's not helpful. Often it can actually lead us deeper and deeper into a stressful feeling because we're going in the wrong direction. It's often when we let go. You know, the principles are subtractive. They're about taking away what's not true and seeing what's left. And, you know, when I work with someone, the layers of untruth is unbelievable. It's so interesting what would look true about yourself that isn't. And so we're always pointing away from the intellect to something deeper here. It's not about trying to cure thought with thought. And just let it settle. You know, there may be a few days afterwards that you see something. You may be listening today, but in a few days something appears and something looks different to you. 
the principles are often very retrospective. It's not that we instantly see something as we're listening. It happens over time. You know, it, the moment that you see it more deeply is the moment you see it more deeply. It can be absolutely anywhere at any time. But also, it's when you notice, it's like, oh, I didn't behave like that. I didn't act in the way that I usually act. I showed up in a different way. You know, I wasn't as reactive. It's like, notice those areas for you where you react. And often afterwards, you think, I don't know why I reacted like that. Well, it's because you've got old habitual conditioning and thought that makes that appear true. It looks like you need to react to that somewhere inside you. There's some old thinking that needs to defend itself. And that defensiveness comes in and that's your reaction. Now, what happens with the principles is a lot of that begins to fall away and not from a doing, you don't have to do anything for that to happen, just from a being, just from a listening. It undoes a lot of our old conditioning, our old thinking. And we just get to show up in a different way in life. We just get to begin to go, well, I made that up. You know, that's often what we're doing. We're making a lot of things up. We're so conditioned by the world and we don't notice. And we take the world and turn it into things that are personal. So we take other people's beliefs and we take them in and we turn them into our own thinking. And then we live as if that's true. Well, everybody's making everything up. So why do we have to live as what other people are saying is true? And even deeper than that, why do we have to live as what we're saying is true? We've made things up. Nothing's set in stone. So if you can just slow down over this hour and come into it as if you don't know anything, you know, as if you're just brand new, it's, you know, whatever you can apply this to, don't. Don't make it about something you've heard before. Just try and be fresh in the moment and just to see what looks different. And know that everything's okay. It's always okay no matter how it looks. It's us and our reactions to things that really create all the problems that we have. And we're only ever one thought away from seeing that. We're only ever one thought away from everything looking different. So, yeah, that's it. I just want to kind of open that space up for us all to sit in something that really is enriching. You know, it really does help us in life. I say it every week. This isn't just because it's a lovely conversation. It's because it's really practical. There'll be moments where you'll suddenly realize that, oh, oh, okay, yeah, I showed up different. Or, well, I don't need to do that. Or, oh, look what I just did. That was all thought. So we literally catch ourselves in the act of getting caught up. And as soon as we do that, we're not caught up anymore because we're seeing it more deeply. We're having a deeper experience of who we are. So the three principles in essence are mind, consciousness and thought. And they describe the landscape of the human experience. They describe every one of us. They describe the 8 billion people on the planet. There's something about who we are that is deeper than the physical. You know, we have this world of form. We have these physical bodies. We live in a physical world. But there's something more to that. Even science points to that. That there's this energy that comes through that has this creative potential, this creative power. And we know it for ourselves as well. You know, if we've had children, we've seen it in that. If we look at nature, we can see it in that. There's always glimpses of something more than who we think we are. And that's really important to understand because that begins to loosen up all the tight thinking we have about how life should look, all of our problems, all the things that we get caught up in. Because as we get a bigger perspective, as the landscape widens of who we are, you know, the bandwidth widens into, well, I'm not just this physical being. I'm not just this limited thinking. There's something more to who I am. As that opens up, we begin to see things differently. We, as we zoom out, your things that look like problems will just look like things that you need to deal with. So it's like the perspective shifts. You know, it's a bit like when you see the globe and someone then puts a pinprick on it and then zooms out and out and out and out and you realise how small we really are in comparison to everything, in comparison to the universe. And we are, but we're also connected to all of that. There's no separation of that. 
So these three principles of mind, consciousness, and thought really begin to show us what that energy behind life is. So the principle of thought is very easy to see because we all experience it constantly. We're all caught up in it. People want to control thought. People want to stop thought. We have thinking that is really creating every moment of our life. Without thought, you're not having an experience. So really, these are the building blocks of who we are. They're like the ABC of who we are. It's like you can't have a sentence or write a book without the ABC. You can't have a human being without the three principles. So you have this principle of thought. You have this principle of consciousness, which is the awareness of who we are, the awareness of thought. It's the seeing who we are at the deepest level. You can have the experience of being really caught up, but also seeing yourself as being really caught up or seeing you and your thinking. You know, think, oh God, I'm being nuts today. Well, that's the consciousness. That's the observer of the self. That's the deepest sense of self that we are. And then we have the principle of mind. Now, mind's really, really beautiful to me because, and it's probably the hardest one to explain by far, because mind is not mind. It's not our personal mind. It's not mind as we know it as in thought. It's universal mind. It's the energy behind life. If we look at there's an infinite intelligence that creates all things, whatever that means to you would be mind. Yeah, so if someone was religious, it would be God. To somebody that was spiritual, it would be universal energy. To someone that was an atheist, it would be nature. There's a divine intelligence to nature. Nobody can deny that. It's incredibly intelligent. We can see it. We can observe it. So these three truths of who we are begin to help us understand who we are. They give us a deeper sense that this experience really is a transient one. There's so many little things that we get caught up in that we don't need to get caught up in. And once we see these principles, they help us navigate life. They help us find our way through life because what they're doing is they're showing us the inner being, the sense of who we are before who we think we are. And that allows us to drop out of the intellect for a moment and touch this wisdom and wisdom is always guiding us that's a really powerful thing to see with this that we all have wisdom yeah we just get so lost in personal thought and the intellect that we override it a lot of the time so we're actually opening up to something deeper by understanding the principles it also allows us to make meaning of life where sometimes we could be really overwhelmed by life but if we have this fundamental meaning to life, then we're not so misled. We understand who we are. We come back to who we are. To the extent that we grasp the principles, I believe will be to the extent we'll be less frightened by our actual experience. Yeah, so if you think about that, the more you understand who you are, the less frightened you are going to be of life. Now, that was true for me. I was very frightened of life when I came into the principles because they came to me kind of after a breakdown when I'd become very scared of life. So suddenly these principles, this understanding that the world was coming from me, not coming to me, allowed me to have a much richer experience because the world fundamentally couldn't hurt me. It was all me. So there was nothing to be scared of. I didn't need to actually keep myself safe and obviously we need to keep ourselves safe to a certain extent but I didn't need to keep myself safe from life and that was fundamentally what I was doing I was keeping myself safe from life that was because I'd become so frightened because I didn't understand what life was and I also had become very very frightened of my own thinking because I didn't understand thought so the three principles of mind consciousness and thought reassure us they reassure us in those really dark moments, which we can still get even when we understand them, that we're only one thought away from new thought, from insight, from relief, from a more helpful way of seeing things. And you know what I really love is that we don't have to make that happen with the principles. We know that it's our true nature. We know that it can be revealed at any moment. 
And in fact, the separation that's trying to manipulate feeling better will be taking us further and further away from feeling better. It's in the letting go and being that suddenly something fresh will come through, new thoughts will come through, and we'll get to see life with more wisdom because we're not passive receptors of the world and life and circumstances and events. We're not here to be just thrown around by life and be in a fight with life. You know, we know people that can live that way it's like they always seem to be in a fight with reality they always seem to be in a fight with life and I mean I tweeted earlier about pick your battles I really do believe that of course sometimes there are going to be things we, we believe in that we want to fight against but to fundamentally bottom line be in a fight with life is a very very difficult place to be because what you're doing is you're constantly creating resistance you're constantly creating something to fight with because fundamentally our belief systems and our thinking creates our world. So where are we coming from is what we're going to see. It's such a beautifully designed system that we forget. We are so perfectly designed. So if I go back to the principle of thought. So thought creates feeling. We're always having two sides of a coin as our fundamental experience of being alive in every moment. Okay, thought, feeling, thought, feeling, thought, feeling. Yeah, so if we see that and we understand that, when the thought and feeling come, instead of looking out to the world and trying to manipulate the world or resist the world and believe it, the feeling's coming from the world, we understand that it's all us. And in the sense of understanding that it's us, that it's coming from us, we can say, okay, I don't need to react to this in the way that I think I need to react to it because actually what's happening is I'm getting caught up. So what the feeling is actually telling you isn't that the world is out to get you, not that you need to fight the world. It's actually telling you that you don't need to believe your thinking. If anything, it's time to step back and see it a little bit differently because we're all internally generating our experience of life. And that's the moment to moment my experience is moment to moment I see that so often now because if I do say I wake up and I'm not in a great mood or I feel sad or I'm like oh today and it doesn't become a oh today and I play that movie out for the whole day there'll be a oh well you know that's thought you actually the sun's shining it's a lovely day and at some point I'll forget that I woke up sad and life will come at me and I'll have the most enriching experience and suddenly I'll be like oh wow life's amazing and not when think of grand happening just by being in it just by understanding that I don't have to take my thoughts and feelings as seriously as I used to take them and if you think about how as a society we've become so obsessed with feeling and it can be quite self-indulgent you know, I actually, when I work with people, I take them in the opposite direction. I say, what if you don't have to believe that feeling? What if it's not telling you about your past? It's not telling you about what's going on now. It's not telling you about the future. It's not telling you you're a shit person. It's not telling you you're any of these things. What if the feeling is just a reflection of your caught up thinking that you're in right now? And maybe if you took less notice of it, you could actually meet life, enjoy life, show up to life and have a better experience of being alive. That's the difference with this. It's not self-indulgent. The principles are anything but self-indulgent. And they're definitely not victim-based. We're not a victim. We're actually really, really powerful. And I think if we see that and we come to realise that, we let go of so much bullshit that we've believed in the past, where we've been a victim. Oh, I'm, you know, oh, I'm not as good looking as my sister. I'm not as clever as my brother. Or I'm, whatever it is. Oh, I didn't do well at school or I haven't got enough money. Wherever you feel less is bullshit. You're completely making that up. It's like we don't have to live by those thoughts. We can see through them. And as we see through them, that's where the, beliefs and thinking drop 
they drop away because we're seeing that they're not true anymore. We're having a different experience of them. It's like, oh, well, that can't be true. I totally made that up. If things were true, everybody would feel and think the same about everything, and we don't. It's always us. You know, and I think before we understood the principles, we unknowingly walked around like it was the world, like it was our past, like it was the people in our lives, like it was the future. You know, we could live in victimhood. But when we understand the principles, we wake up, we have knowing. We see that, again, we're generating our experience of life. We see that we are the source of life. We see that we are all infinite intelligence. So knowledge of these principles is so important. And you can be like, well, tell me what they are. But <laughs> I am, because it's so hard to explain, really, because we're talking about things that are intangible. We're talking about these energies that create our moment-to-moment -moment experience, but they're invisible. But you know that you've got them. You know that you are them. You know that you're thought, you know that you're conscious, you know that there's infinite intelligence behind life. And it's almost like an exploration. It's almost like having a torch on a dark night. And the torch is the principles. And it's like, what can we see that looks different? What can we uncover? You know, and we're all the same. We're, we are all this infinite intelligence, as I said. And the principles, and the, you know, that torch light can help us gracefully move through life. Now, if we haven't got that light, we're falling over, we're tripping over everything. The light shines. Understanding the principles is the light shining and guiding us through it because suddenly we know who we are. Suddenly we know that, yes, of course we're still going to have struggles, but when new thought and insight appear, that's what's going to help us get through those. You know, it, this is uh, also why it's quite hard to explain it's because Sid Banks, who founded the principles, who kind of uncovered the understanding, he used to say they're a matter of the heart, not the intellect. When we're sharing it, when we're having these conversations, it's trying to speak from the heart, not the mind. It's almost trying to bypass the mind, not get caught up in the intellectual understanding of the principles, but connect with people heart to heart. So when I work with clients, it's heart to heart. I literally fall in love with my clients. I love every one of them. You know, they are amazing. And I sit with them, you know, whether it's online, whether it's in person. And there's just such a beautiful connection. And it's because we're coming out of the intellect into a deep space, which is where we are all so deeply connected, that when you have that experience with someone, it's like there's nothing but love. So of course you're going to love them. Of course that connection's going to be love. So this learning isn't an intellectual learning. It's a insightful learning. It's not memory based. It's revealed to us. I don't sit as an expert when I'm with someone. I sit as their friend. This isn't a traditional teaching. It's a deep, truthful teaching. We're not telling people what to think. We're showing them that they think and what thought is and how it operates. And the fact that it's neutral, the fact that every thought we have is neutral other than our relationship to it. It's our relationship to the thought that creates how we see the thought. So it's, yes, obviously I've got a certain way of teaching and I can explain it to a certain extent. And I'm very lucky to be able to do that. But even when you understand it a little bit, you don't have to worry about sharing it with someone and trying to work out what to say. You can just sit with them and share from your heart and they'll hear something. It can be about how you've seen it, how it's changed you. That's enough. Because it is literally a conversation between friends. It goes from teaching to sharing. And that's a really lovely thing to have. And it's a really lovely thing for people to have available to them. Because you know a lot of times that uh, people are speaking to you because they want you to see it their way. And it's like, why would you need someone to do that? Even with this, if I'm speaking to someone and they're not interested, it's like I just stop speaking about it. They don't need to see it. 
or they'll see it exactly at the right moment that they're meant to see it. You know, it's understanding that we all see things at the perfect moment for us. And it's always, with the three principles, it's always through an insight into thought. It's always through a glimpse of mind consciousness or thought. It's one of these little glimpses of seeing at the deepest level the human experience that take away the egocentric idea of the self. It's not destroying the ego, because I think we still have an ego, but it's an understanding of the ego, and it's a lessening of the ego. It's a taking away that circumstances make us happy and seeing that it's all really coming from us. It's always us. So, you know, I use this in different ways with different people. For some people, they just come because they love the conversation and they want to know more. For other people, it's because they're more interested in the spiritual awakening side. For others, it's mental health. You can see from a mental health perspective how not taking thoughts so seriously would be so helpful. Yeah, and to begin to unravel all the beliefs and the thinking that have contracted to create that mental illness. Yeah, so it's fascinating to sit with people and see how they think about themselves and about the world. And it's fascinating because when you sit with them and you hear that, you see that their world is a direct reflection of that. And that's mind-blowing. That's like, wow. Okay, that's that's all them. How they see it is how it appears, not the other way around. And how, as they see it differently, how it begins to change. It loosens up because they have insight. They see it differently. It begins to dissolve, you know, all the unhelpful, but not all, a lot of the unhelpful thinking dissolves and suddenly life reflects that back to them. And, you know, I truly believe that when we want to see change in the world, we start with us. And that's at the deepest inner level of who we are, challenging who we are to begin to see it differently, not just or from the sense of, oh, show up different. Well, we're going to show up different when we see things differently. Again, always back to who we really are. So I'm going to go over to Dreyfus and see if he has any questions or insights. Really, really thought-provoking, or I should say is mind-provoking, really. Yeah, and I find that just uh, listening to the way you speak about the three principles, Moles, just gives me a certain sense of that reflection that I need on a weekly basis just to kind of wind myself down. So I actually find myself in a position where I can't ask any questions because I'm actually feeling quite just perceptive and quite quiet at the moment. So if anyone else would like to step up and ask any questions, now's the time. If you want to just send an invite and I'll let you pop up. Yeah, that's so true as well. It's I just finished a six-week online course and... It's the first week people are asking questions. And by the sixth week, I'm like, so no one's got anything to say. And it's just spent that time just falling out of their minds and having a more peaceful feeling. And it's really interesting to observe. But I see we've had a request. Hello, Chris. Yeah, no, I just listened in for the first time today. I've been meaning to get around to listening in. But um, hearing you talk has actually brought me down a level. I was very wound up and I have on my ceiling, I wrote, you create your own reality. So I'm very, I've been practicing for the last year or so. And sometimes I, I still get wound up in myself. I still, do you know, but you've, hearing your voice, you're, it's a very soothing and to hear you come back to, it's all mind. Do you know, it's, it comes from the inside. So you've got, yeah, you've helped me today. Thank you. Thank you for coming up and saying that. I really appreciate it. It's always lovely to hear from people that are listening. That's it. And you can't explain that. No. You really can't explain that. What's happened there? So Sid Banks, actually, the founder of The Principles, used to say, which I love, was that put a group of people in one room, put a group of people in another room, tell the first group to meditate, and then the second group, you're just going to talk to them about The Three Principles. That the group that were listening to someone talk about the three principles would have a deeper state of meditation than those that were trying to meditate. Because 
when you're listening to me, I'm already setting you up that there's nowhere to get. I'm showing you that actually it's already here. You know, you just need to listen. There's nothing for you to do. And what that proves is that it's in the non-doing that we touch the deeper spaces of who we are. It's, it's from there that something is revealed. Now, I'm not against meditation. I lived in a meditation commune for a year, many moons ago. I don't actually practice it anymore, but I understand its benefits. But I found this so much more powerful that actually where the meditative state lives is before thought. So, so if you say to someone that's really caught up in their head, right, meditate now, that's going to be really difficult because they're going to sit there and there's going to be a them trying to meditate, which is going to actually create more thoughts. Now, there is practice that people obviously can get better at it and the meditation comes in and the state becomes more apparent. But with this, I can have a conversation with someone, as can many other teachers, and suddenly the person just relaxes. It's like the contraction of the mind just softens. And it's in that softening that this way of seeing and this way of being is revealed that is so much more peaceful. It's so much more. Yeah, literally, like you talking and just there, I can feel it. It's just like <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Chris. And as it's your first one, we do have a podcast. There's 43 episodes. We've been doing this for a year and a half. And so it's on all the platforms, your Spotify, your Apple. So please go and subscribe and you can listen to old episodes there. And I think the fact that you've resonated with it today, I think you'll find that. Oh, yeah, I can feel it in my chest. I can feel it in my chest at the minute, like total. Nice. Yeah, but I think you'll be really, really helped to go back and listen. And obviously we're here every Thursday at this time as well. So. Yeah, love to have you come back and really 100%. thank you. It's your first one. Thank you for coming and speaking. We really appreciate it. One hundred percent. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, uh, Dred, yes, as well. Thank you. Thank you. And everyone. And everyone for being here. Yeah, and that is true, everyone, because we all create the feeling together. It's not me. It's the group as well. There's something in it. There's something in seeing who we are more deeply that really reveals this peace that we are underneath all the thick, crappy thinking that we believe over and over and over again. So if anyone else has got any questions or anything to say, it would obviously be lovely to hear from you. I haven't got my partner in crime, Jen, with me tonight. So I don't know if I said at the beginning, she's not feeling great, but she'll be back next week. But uh, if not, I will carry on. I, I found it a really interesting point, how you were saying about the relationship of thought and mind and how the meditation is revolves around that point of thought. I found that really quite thought provoking. I just thought I'd tell you that most. Okay, thank you, darling. Yeah, it just shifts. It just changes how we see the things that look like they're set. It's like if you want a peaceful mind, meditate. That looks like a really true thing, but for some people, it's true. But it's not true for everybody. There's people I've had come to me that, that drives them crazy. And they feel bad, they actually feel bad because they can't do it. And again, what I teach is never a prescription. I'm never going to prescribe meditate or don't meditate. It's a description of how we are. It's the human operating system description. From that, your access to your own wisdom will reveal what you should do. Maybe meditation may be right for you. Maybe there'll be other things that will be right for you. But having the core understanding of who you are is going to be the most helpful thing. You know, I've seen that in myself. I've seen it in clients. I've seen it in other practitioners. You know, when I found the principles, when I had my first insight, I was like, well, maybe it's just me because this has blown my mind. And how have I never heard about this? Because I'd been seeking for many, many years. And when I saw thought and had that initial oh my god everything really is thought that huge insight i was like oh so have other people seen this and then suddenly this whole world opened up of seeing that well it was used in prisons it's not all but in some prisons it's used in mental health and there's psychologists and psychiatrists in america that have been using it for many years it's used in some nhs was starting to use it there's many different areas where suddenly it was revealed that 
there is something to be seen in this understanding that is incredibly powerful. I'm a registered member of the 3PGC, which is the governing body for principals teachers. And if you go on there, there is actually an evidence of impact document. And it's kind of mind blowing when you compare it to other things that actually its success rate is phenomenal. I think I said this before, but it's such a beautiful story. There's a teacher called Jacqueline Hollows and she has programs in prisons. And I think it's mainly up north in the north of England. And she teaches them the principles. And I was on a group call. In this group call, she was there and a couple of people that she'd actually taught in prison that were now out of prison were there. And they were chatting and two guys that were out of prison, one of them, I think it was Derek and Omar. And Omar was just saying, you know, at first he was resistant. He had to go to do this course. And then suddenly he heard something and he was like, oh, and then he got into it and then he listened. And this was a kid that had been in gangs and I think it was quite high up in gangs and probably done some terrible things. And he transformed and he left prison and he's now actually a teacher of the three principles. But on the call, someone said to him, so Omar, what was the point where you saw that these three principles had really impacted you, that there was something in them that had changed your life? And he said, well, I was in prison and I was the happiest I'd ever been in my whole life. And that wouldn't make sense. You know, think about that. How could that make sense, really, unless something could deeply change within him? And he saw that it does come from us. The happiness does come from us because there's definitely no way it would have come from being in prison. So he had this insight that completely transformed him. And he's not alone. I had an insight that transformed me. Jem has insights that are transforming her. It's and it's an ongoing thing. I don't feel like, well, I've had my insights and I'm done. I know there's so much more available for me to see, to have a different experience and to see it more deeply and for my teaching to deepen. That's the direction that this is going in. We're born with it. We cover it up and then it gets revealed. But what's revealed is infinite. So it's never going to end what we can see. And, you know, some people will say, well, I haven't had an insight. So what are you talking about? I've been listening for a year. and But it doesn't have to be a big mind-blowing insight like I had. Many people just have incremental, small incremental ways of seeing things differently. But if you look back in a year, they've probably had the same changes as somebody that had a big insight because, you know, for them it's just looked different. But actually how they see the world and how they see themselves and how they view the human experience would have completely changed. So don't worry about if it's a huge insight. It's just, how does life look? Is life looking better? Is life looking different? Am I really seeing that life is coming from me and not coming at me? Yeah, it's always that way. You know, the secret to this is to see life from the perspective of the soul not from your intellect. Now, we're always going to still see it from the intellect. We have an intellect. It wants to be the boss. We're going to get caught up in it. But there's something so much deeper to see about the human experience. There's this awareness. As I said, there's this wisdom. When we understand this, we stop reinforcing the separation and we start looking within to where we're the same. Because... The personal mind, the intellect, cannot create truth. It wants to. It wants to take possession of it, but it can't. It's what comes before. And I wonder if this is true for some of you. It would be interesting if you can message me maybe after and let me know. Is that maybe things do look a bit different and there are changes and you do listen, but do you get off the call and can't remember what we were talking about? Because often in sessions with clients and in groups afterwards they go I can't remember a thing but I feel amazing you know it's because that points to what I was saying earlier that it's not an intellectual thing it's not about remembering you know it's not our old way of learning it's an insightful way of learning and that's actually a really good thing so when somebody's been with me for a session and is maybe it's their first or second session and at the end then they go Oh, I just can't remember what you said though. And I go, that's great. 
That's great because I'm not speaking to your mind. I'm speaking to your soul. That's the difference. That's why the mind calms. That's why for many of you, you come back most weeks. Now we have our regulars, our core that are always here. In fact, Jem found out the other day because the podcast actually is doing really, really well. And she found out the other day or she stumbled across that we have 105,000 unique listeners on the podcast or have had. That's mind blowing. I said, imagine, Jem, if we were stood up in a room in front of that many people, we'd shit ourselves. <laughs> but 105,000 unique people have listened to us. It's like, wow. And, you know, that's going to grow. That's going to get bigger. That's going to help more people because we're showing people something more truthful about who they are. We're showing them that we don't have to listen to the tiny mind, the intellect over and over again, repeating the same old shit over and over again. That's not who we are. That's just what thought is doing. So this confrontation of the self, this seeing who we are is the freedom. It's the ultimate freedom. As I said about Omar in prison, it's the ultimate freedom is the freedom of mind. What I love about Having the freedom of mind is it allows us to want freedom in the world as well. It's like that freedom needs to be reflected back to us. So I teach this. I'm peaceful. I understand who I am as much as you can understand who you are. I explore the depths of who I am. I really love the conversation. But I'm also an activist, someone that will fight for freedom. And they're not incongruent because it's something that I'm passionate about. I believe that we're born free. So I want to remain free. I want to fight for freedom for myself, for other people, for future generations. Because I think it's incredibly important. But it comes from, I think, this essential freedom that I know that I am. It's not a mind thing. It really is a heart thing. It's something that I really get from knowing who I am, but also exploring that in the world and challenging the world when it's showing up in a way that is constraining me from being that. I know some people say, well, you teach this. How can you be so challenging to the world? Well, why not? You know, we are two things in many ways. I mean, it's one thing fundamentally, but it's this human self with this intellect and this ego and this spiritual self, this true nature, which is something more. And I'm both things. So I'm going to show up as both things. But don't allow the world to convince you that you're the opposite of who you truly are. You're not confinement. You're not limited. Yeah, you deserve freedom. You're a limitless being and the world shows up and tells you that you're not enough. Well, that bollocks to that. Can I only ever be enough, more than enough. Now, we're all going to get caught up in thought and limit ourselves to a certain extent, but we can begin to see through that. We can begin to break the barriers of who we think we are. We begin to break the barriers of what we think the world is. We begin to see that this going within has to have that reflection in the outside world so we don't have to manipulate our minds that's not where it's at that we don't have to control thought we see through it we get brave it's interesting when you understand all of this to begin to challenge yourself as well challenge who you think you are Go beyond what you think you can do. Even something like tonight where Jem couldn't do it. And at first I was like, oh, I won't. Yeah, we'll just cancel. And I was like, no, do it on your own. You know, if you fuck it up, you fuck it up. You can delete it. But it was that, it's okay. It's okay to do these things. It's okay to go beyond. And even, you know, in small ways. And in fact, sometimes it's the small ways that lead to the bigger ways. So like doing this today or... You know, going out of my comfort zone and going and do something that I maybe think, oh, I can't be bothered to do that. I don't want to do that tonight. No, go, do it. Who knows what life's going to show up as? Who knows what it's going to look like? Push yourself. 
And there's times where we don't want to do that, and that's fine. I think what I'm trying to point to here is it's a beautiful conversation, but it's not only about being passive. We can be active. We can take actions that hopefully will change the world, that will make a difference. Because why not? Why not do that? Just coming back to who we are allows us to not be so scared. It allows us to access this courageous self because the world's just doing what the world does. I've got to say, life, lifing. Life's always lifing. But we are pure potential. And it's like, what are we going to do with that potential? You know, it's what are you thinking that isn't true about yourself or the world that if you saw through it, life would be so much better. And it's not about escaping being human. It's actually about fully embracing it. We can really embrace this beautiful gift of being human for this temporary time that we've been given. I guess understanding the principles during that human experience is a bit like in The Wizard of Oz where it's just the man behind the curtain. We get to see what's really happening. It's wonderfully mysterious, actually, but it's also incredibly simple. Oh, it was us all along. We are the man behind the curtain. We are the creation. We are the creator. And it's like, that's fun to be. That's much better than me being a victim of the world or being scared of my thinking or believing a diagnosis that someone gives me. And thinking that I'm going to be that for the rest of my life. So whatever issues that we have, I truly believe they can be resolved with this understanding of these three principles. And I really know that whatever's on the table for us, we have within us what we need to cope with it. And we don't find peace by rearranging the circumstances of life. We find peace by realising who we really are. And I think that's hopefully the gift I give to you guys and the gift that the people that listen on the podcast hear and that there's just this resonance that wakes us up and we have these, for me, it's like I've two lives. There's the before the principles and after the principles. So when I thought the world created everything and all my experiences and all my problems and all my feelings to, oh, it was all me. And I know which one I prefer. Traders. Totally agree. And I think what I'm taking from that is really negotiating the difference between what is internal and what is external and being conscious of that divide between what's going on inside all of us and what is portrayed from the outside. Because I think we're always taught. We're taught in schools. We're taught in universities that power and influence is outside of the body. But I think what I'm taking from this is that the power actually exists within all of us. And that power is to transform ourselves and to make us better human beings. And all the tools that we need actually lies within. So thanks for that, Moles. You've stirred that within me. Oh, lovely way of putting it. I like that. Nice conclusion. And it's true. And of course they're going to tell us power is outside of us. Because they want us to feel powerless. So we wake up to the power that we are by revealing this, by coming home to who we are. And it's interesting that we become less scared of that perceived outside power when we do wake up to this. Because it just is what it is. It's a lie. It's an illusion. And again, Gem and I didn't create this just because we want to give people a nice feeling. Of course we do. Of course we want people to live in a nice feeling and have a lovely understanding and a deeper understanding of who they are. But we also share it because we want people to wake up. We want people to realise their own power. We want the world to change. And I think that's really fundamentally our purpose because the changes that we want to see in the world are going to come from mentally healthy, strong people because they're not going to be scared to go out and make change. You know, that's what this gives us. It gives us mental health. It gives us strength. Absolutely. Thank you so much for coming up and helping. No problem at all. No problem. I really appreciate it. It's been very, very helpful. Thank you, Chris, for coming and speaking. If anyone wants to say anything before we finish, please do. Got through the hour. I don't think I need to delete it. I think we're good. 
and Jen will hopefully be back next week. Please share the podcast. Please listen to the podcast. And yeah, please join us again. I will leave you with a quote from Sid Banks that I spoke about earlier. As I said, Sid is the founder of The Principles. And he says, you have to go beyond all concepts and you'll find it in the stillness of your mind. In the quiet chambers of your mind, when you go from the known to the unknown, from the physical to the spiritual, when you hear beyond the word, an inner light goes on and it brings out the inner knowledge, wisdom, spiritual intelligence before the contamination of human thought. Be grateful for the spiritual wisdom you have found that has changed your life. It's a feeling. Don't listen to the words. Please look for a feeling. Thank you, everybody.